How's it going, Z-Pack? It's your boy, Dr. Zubin Nemanja, a.k.a. ZDogMD. Check it out, quick housekeeping. Sign up for our email list. That's how you can get early videos, secret songs, cool stuff. Just go to my website, zdogmd.com. There's a contact form there. You can click, put me on your list. Or on Facebook, there's a tab. Also, if you don't mind, at some point, would love it if you could help us out on Patreon, help support the show. If you're a Patreon supporter, you get access also to secret purpose-made videos and early releases. That's just patreon.com forward slash zdogmd. Okay, tonight, I'm, hi Cassie, how are you? Uh, what's up, Bridget? Hey to you, Bridget Battle. All right, tonight I wanna to talk about something that is just something I am really fascinated with and I've been reading about and working on quite a bit for myself personally to make try to make myself a better person. I get so excited about it that I wanted to talk to you about it and I'm still learning about it myself, which means I have no idea whether I can convey this in a reasonably uh, cogent fashion. And it's also very difficult because we're talking about the mind, how the mind actually works. So what it is that actually, when, when you see the world, when you hear something, when you taste something, when you have a thought, when you have an emotion, when you make a decision, when you slam your foot on the gas or the brake, what the hell is doing that? And we in healthcare know, well, it's something to do with neurons and the brain and things are firing and all that. I'm gonna dial it back about two or 3,000 years to the first sort of models of the mind that I think to this day stand up to modern neuroscience and are actually being backed up. And the great thing about this model of the mind that I'm gonna talk about, it's called the mind system model. And it actually comes from a sort of ancient Buddhist school of thought, but it modernizes beautifully because it really probably is a good way to describe how our minds actually work. Why do we care? Because you have to understand that there is, when you really look at the mind carefully, there's no little guy in there making decisions. There's no thinker behind your eyes pulling the levers. It's a beautiful system of unconscious sub-minds that interact with each other in a space, a little boardroom that we call conscious awareness. And once you start to understand that, you can transform the way you actually go through your day, you deal with other people, you make decisions, and make your life so much better with much less suffering. And that's my goal through meditation and through studying this stuff, but I'm gonna try to teach you today just a bit about how this might work. And I'm basing it on this book that I've been talking about for a while, The Mind Illuminated, by this guy, John Yates, who goes by Chuladasa. And he was a, um, I forget if he was a neuroscientist, some sort of neuroscience guy who ended up just spending years on meditative retreat, became like a Buddhist adept meditator, and then teaches people uh, about meditation from a scientific perspective. And this book is really like a guide, like how do you meditate? But there are these interludes in the book, and the interlude that really blew my mind, no pun intended, is the fifth interlude in this book called The Mind System. And in this interlude, he's trying to frame a basic premise, and it gets more complicated later in the book and within the chapter itself. He's trying to frame a basic premise of what is the mind? How does it actually function? Is it under our control? Who is the hour we're talking about? Let me try to explain it as simply as I can and then try to get into the why we care and what it's gonna do to actually help us understand our actions and our thoughts and our emotions better so that we'll be less reactive, less of dicks, uh, and just more able to function, to focus, and to be happy and healthy. So it looks like this. The mind is actually a collection of unconscious little module minds, or sub-minds, as he calls it in the book. So, and let's, let's distinguish it from the actual physical brain. I'm not gonna talk about the physical brain. Each part of the physical brain may correspond to some part or some sub-mind, like the frontal lobe may be an in inhibitory sub-mind, et cetera. I don't care so much about that. I'm interested in functionally, in terms of our experience, what are these minds like? So what I mean by unconscious sub-minds is you have an auditory sub-mind. That is, it's unconsciously active. You don't know it's really doing stuff but it's responsible for taking in auditory uh, stimuli, sounds, and then creating, creating the experience of sound for us. 
not only doing that, but actually doing a lot of processing unconsciously, like trying to see, oh, is this a sound I recognize? And is it something that's important to the organism as a whole? Do I need the rest of the mind's attention on this? So just the auditory submind does so much, and that's just hearing. Then you have a visual submind that is responsible for taking in stimuli, but then creating an entire world of vision. And it takes just simple shades and colors and light variations, and it creates a bird or a beautiful sunset. That's how the mind actually perceives it. Now, all of this happens unconsciously. You have a taste submind, you have a, a, a smelling submind, you have what they call a somatosensory submind. That means feeling. So, temperature, hot, cold, pressure, vibration, internal sensations, butterflies in the stomach, pain, um, uh, sort of pressure. All of those subminds are your sensory subminds, right? So they are several modules, all acting unconsciously. You don't, not even knowing what's going on in those subminds. Now, on the other side are the thinking, discriminating subminds. So the part of your mind that does math, does strategic planning, that's really good at remembering stuff. The like little secretary that writes stuff down. The court, court reporter, um, the emotional submind which uh, feels things, anger, jealousy, love, happiness, those kind of things. Those are all also unconscious subminds. So, so far we have the sensory subminds and the thinking sort of subminds, the discriminatory subminds that also include emotional subminds, all unconscious. And they're all doing their thing at the same time. The brain is a parallel processor. It's doing all this stuff under the hood. It's like a computer. You never really know what's happening there. It's, it's constantly churning. But then what is it when you actually are aware of something? What's the conscious part of the mind? So the way he describes it in this book, and I think it's brilliant, consciousness, awareness, what we're actually aware of. Um, and, and again, I've used the analogy before of the elephant and the writer, the elephant being the unconscious mind and the writer being the little guy on top that's aware of stuff. And I think, I'm not going to get into that analogy again, but it kind of really dovetails into this. The conscious mind, consider it like this, it's like it doesn't do anything. It is a space where all the subminds are like members of a corporation. They go to the consciousness boardroom. And consciousness is like this big space with a PowerPoint projector in it. And that PowerPoint projector can only show one frame of an image at a time. And where are those frames coming from that we're actually aware of? Like that awareness, like I'm aware of light and, and I'm aware of my phone right now. Like wh what's, what's putting those things on the screen? The unconscious subminds. So my visual submind projects on that PowerPoint screen the image of my phone. The discriminating submind then sees that image because the beautiful thing about con the consciousness boardroom is all the subminds sit at it like this. Hmm. Okay, show me something. Show me something, visual submind. Oh, interesting. It's a series of interesting images and shadows that have been kind of pre processed and they look like an image I've seen before. Discriminating submind sees that on the PowerPoint screen of our conscious boardroom and goes, that's a phone. Then the emotional submind goes, oh shit. You're live right now in front of 343 people. You better start focusing what you're talking about. And that causes the emotional mind to panic and generate butterflies in the stomach, which then caused the discriminating mind to go, damn, what was I talking about next? Which then caused a motor sequence to go and make me say a bunch of shit. And that, this is how the mind works. So in the consciousness boardroom, which is this empty space, each submind gets a frame to project something out there. And all the other minds can then interface with that and make decisions on stuff. Now, only one submind at a time can project something into consciousness. It's called a moment of consciousness. It's like a frame in a movie. But when you tie hundreds of thousands of these together in you know, <clears throat> a couple minutes, and there's a certain refresh rate of the brain and hurts, and these moments of consciousness happen very, very fast per, per minute or per second, it feels like a movie. It feels continuous. Consciousness feels like I'm experiencing stuff in a flow. In reality, each of the subminds, and this, there's actually neuroscience to back this up, each of the sub, this theory, and it's still a theory, each of the subminds projects something uh, on the screen at a time. And whatever submind is dominating at the time kind of controls the boardroom. So here's kind of how it might work. You have, um, you're driving, say, and 
unconsciously, your visual system is processing stuff because you've been condi you've conditioned those subminds through exposure in the boardroom when you were in driver's training and years of driving to kind of do this automatically. They move the eyes automatically. They recognize minor threats. They keep you in the center of the road. They tell then the motor functions to do this and that, put your foot on the gas, put your foot on the brake. And they use the interface with the auditory part and all this is unconscious. Now what happens when a, a shopping cart rolls right out into the street? If, you're, if your discriminating mind was distracted doing something else in consciousness, thinking about something, talking to a passenger, listening to music, the auditory and the, the visual submind immediately go, unconsciously they go, shit, take that knowledge of this cart rolling into the road, throw it into the boardroom. Whatever was in there before, all eyes are on this cart because those subminds have been conditioned through training and some of it's genetic, just, oh shit, there's something moving there that shouldn't be there. They're conditioned to go, ah, uh -uh, this is no, override everything. And they throw it up and get your attention. Attention is simply where that PowerPoint projector is focused. Because you can only focus on one thing at a time. And so in that conscious room, now suddenly your attention's on this cart. If your other subminds aren't paying attention at the time, they're doing other things, right? When it comes up, a decision has to be made. And a decision is made when the different subminds sort of go, oh, okay, this. If it's super fast and you haven't been paying attention and you're just mindless when it happens, your, your, motor, your uh, um, uh, visual submind will tell the discriminating submind, okay, slam on the brakes and swerve the wheel to the left automatically. You won't even be aware of it. You'll just do it. Now, you may miss the cart in the road but you may slam into the car next to you or cause a pileup behind you by braking. That's how the mind works when you're not mindful, when you don't understand how this boardroom works. Now imagine you've actually conditioned your mind, you've practiced mindfulness meditation or you're paying attention when you drive so that you're focused and you're controlling your attention through practice. Well now your eyes are on the road, you're looking at the road and you're awareness is, is deeply into driving, the thing flies out. You now have the chance, all the subminds are paying attention to that screen. That discriminating submind has a chance to, instead of just reacting, has a chance to go, wait, 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 wait. Look to the left, oh shit, no, I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna do that, you know, I'm gonna slow down and move to the right. Make a conscious executive decision that again, is just a collusion of unconscious subminds working through that little boardroom of consciousness to make a more enlightened and safe decision. Now there are times when you want it to just be automatic, but there are times when you don't. Now imagine that this is how the mind works. I'm simplifying it, I'm cutting out a bunch of shit because I wanna keep it short and sweet and I don't wanna lose people. And we'll come back and talk more about this. If you're interested, let me know in the comments what your questions are. Now imagine you train your minds. How do we learn? We expose the subminds to new things through the consciousness boardroom. So we throw stuff up on that PowerPoint. We read a book, we talk to smart people, we go to a class, we listen to me. <laughs> we don't listen to anti-vaxxers. The subminds then take that information from the boardroom and unconsciously process it. So the next time, either they have a different routine, a program, they come up with a brand new routine, or they confirm that the way they've been doing things is correct and they, and they solidify it. That's how humans learn. That's how we're conditioned. And all of it is unconscious, but it happens in this conscious space. So why do we care about this? Because think about this. When you make, okay, you go to a restaurant and you make a decision. Do I want the salad, which is healthy, or do I want the cheeseburger, which is dope as hell? And your subminds are like battling it out unconsciously. They're like, mm, uh, yeah, I really like cheese, man, and I'm craving a burger, and you know what, I was good this weekend. But then the other submind's like, bitch, you need a salad because you, know, you ate crap for breakfast, and there's that moment of indecision. What is that? It's all the subminds having a discussion unconsciously using information that's presented in consciousness. When you make a, you make a decision, what's actually happening? Basically, the subminds have come to a consensus and then they set an intention. Okay, I'm gonna do this. 
when you tell the waiter, I'll have the salad, what you ought to be saying is, we've decided on the salad, even if it's just you sitting there. And the waiter would freak out and call the police on you. But that's actually what's happening. We are not this individual entity making decisions behind our eyes that you can hold you know, accountable and blame and hate and regret and have self-loathing. We are a system, this neuronal storm that is rolling across the world, that is creating its world as it goes and deciding on stuff in this weird, crazy consensus that we're not even aware of because we never pay attention to what's actually happening in our minds. Meditation is actually the way of saying, I'm gonna introspect and watch this. And the more you do it, and I'm just telling you this from personal experience and I'm only at the beginning of my own journey, the more you do it, and this book is a great path for getting, getting to that, and I'll put a link for it after this thing. The more you look in there, the more you realize, holy shit, this is how I work. I'm not a me at all, which by the way, I left out the secret sauce. So there's another submind that I didn't mention that is responsible not only for our cohesion as human beings and as separate egos and selves, but is responsible probably for a lot of human suffering, probably the vast majority. And this is called the narrating submind. Let me explain real quick. These unconscious subminds, the thinking, the emotional, the auditory, the somatosensory, all these different subminds are always sending raw data at each other. And it's very disconnected because remember, in consciousness, you can only see one frame at a time on that PowerPoint. The narrating submind is a module of the mind that creates what they call a binding moment. That is a projection onto the PowerPoint of consciousness that makes a cohesive sense of disparate parts. So you may see a series of black and red shades moving. Then the discriminator, discriminatory mind may think, mm, you know, bird, uh, blue jay, uh, and then the emotional sub, or red, red breasted, whatever. The emotional submind may then be like, happy, want that. The narrating submind then goes, you just saw a bird because you're out in the wilderness, and man, that bird is beautiful and you want it. And who is you? You is what the narrating submind creates this sense that there is one thing in your mind that makes decisions, and that is you. But it is an illusion. It's a convenient construct that we must have in order to survive, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to function if we just kind of see ourselves as these, <laughs> this consensus of subminds kind of floating around, generating a world and acting on it based on consensus. We would have difficulty functioning. However, the biggest cause of human suffering and mistakes and anger and misery and depression and violence in the world, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many people wiser than me, is the narrating mind allowing us to identify me with these thoughts. The emotional mind pre presents anger. I am angry. Instead of there's anger there. Hmm. Maybe I'll decide what to, we'll decide what to do with that instead of identifying with it and then unconsciously allowing the submind to react without recruiting all the minds to make a decision and then doing something stupid like sending off that email that's going to get you fired or is going to piss off someone you care about, right? What understanding the mind system model does is it tells us, first of all, wow, I'm going to forgive myself because there's no real myself. I'm acting on all these subminds and they're all making decisions and I'm gonna stop identifying with my narrating submind saying, I am this, I am that, I am this. Instead, I'm gonna go, all of this is arising in this beautiful way and I'm gonna make less reactive decisions and the more you meditate, you come to something called unity of mind. All the subminds kind of resolve around a singular intention and you control that. You, meaning the group, controls that intention. I wanna meditate. I wanna feel compassion for people instead of hate. I wanna do X, Y, and Z, and you can do it. Now, imagine the corollary of the submind theory, the mind system model, which is mental illness, attention deficit disorder, 
How might that be explained by this model? Pretty easily. The subminds don't communicate with each other properly. One submind is overactive or underactive. There's either an imbalance or some disturbance in the connections or the subminds themselves, so that emo the emotional submind doesn't connect with the discriminatory submind properly. The narrating submind may be dysfunctional in, say, schizophrenia, where you just can't make a cohesive, logical whole of situations. The sense of self becomes distorted. All these things can be explained in part through the mind system model. Attention deficit disorder is simply each submind is vying for attention. And instead of having an executive sort of consensus as to what to pay attention to, your attention just bounces from object to object and doesn't sustain. And you can see this through meditation, how attention does that anyways. Attention is always wandering because each submind is trying to get your attention in the boardroom of consciousness. All right, I'm going to stop there because this is too much already. There's so much more to this idea. And it all relates to how we relate to others, how we relate to ourselves, how we process our emotions and our activities. What's the role of conscious intention and unconscious intention? And if I'm going to just read one piece of this, let me see. Man, I, got, I just want to read this whole thing to you because it's so good. Mm -mm -mm. I'll just read this. The final key point is that the experience of consciousness, in other words, of being aware, itself is the result of the shared receptivity of these unconscious subminds to the content passing through the through the, the conscious mind. So that boardroom, all these subminds are receptive to seeing that, and that is conscious experience. It's all of those subminds experiencing this world they're creating. And it is the most beautiful, and why? So that we can help, we can reproduce, we can survive, we can experience beauty and love and happiness. That's the human mind. It is by far the central mystery and the most important thing that we can talk about ever, ever. And that's why I want to talk about it tonight. So the next time we'll try to fill in some of the blanks on this. I'm going to read your comments after the show. Try to get a sense of what you're interested in, what you agree and disagree with, what questions you have, and then do another show following up if you agree. Um, thank you for sitting through this. It's one of those things that I'm trying to work through myself. And as a scientist and a doctor and part of a tribe with you guys, I feel like it's so important to understanding how our patients function, how we function, how we can be better human beings, happier, less, um, less filled with conflict and self-hatred. So that being said, I love you guys. Please do me a favor, hit share if you liked any of this. Uh, ask me questions. Let me know what you think of this. And we out. Peace.